Hey friends, Joe here at Reverb. Today we're gonna to be talking about acoustic guitars. When I was a kid, first I had an electric guitar. I thought I was only allowed rock and roll guitar player until I got my first acoustic and I realized a whole nother world. The first acoustic I had was a Court acoustic from the Earth series. I didn't know anything about body shapes, sizes, uh, different sounds that you could get from different acoustic guitars. And I think that's pretty common. It's easy to look at an acoustic guitar and think that's gonna sound like an acoustic guitar. But there's actually a lot of variety in brands, of course, but also in shapes, sizes, sounds. So in this video, I'd like to play for you some of the most popular acoustic guitar body types, and maybe you can have a better understanding of what you're looking for. So let's start with the Dreadnought. Uh, the Dreadnought was originally designed in 1915 by Martin and first sold by the Oliver Ditson Company on special order as the Ditson 111. So Martin officially released the Dreadnought in 1931 with country musicians in mind. It actually wasn't very popular at the time. Maybe its boomier sound and large body was undesirable for a lot of artists. Over time though, it's become one of the most popular body styles. So Martin pretty much defined the genre of Dreadnoughts with the D series, which is what I have here, D18. Um, they've had many models since that have been played by tons of artists like Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, Neil Young, and Joni Mitchell. In response, Gibson made beautiful dreadnoughts, uh, the J35, 45, 15, Hummingbird, and those are guitars that have been played by many of our favorite artists as well. Dreadnoughts are often associated with folk music, specifically the 60s folk boom. Uh, they're often used in bluegrass as well. At this point, they've kind of become ubiquitous uh, in a lot of different genres and styles. <laughs> Okay, next up, auditorium and grand auditorium. I have here a Taylor 214 CE. With a half inch to an inch and a half longer body, the auditorium and grand auditorium models are often confused with concert and grand concert models. They're often kind of mentioned in the same breath, but they actually refer to different shapes and sizes. Grand auditoriums, and Taylors in particular, tend to have uh, a mid-range scoop, which makes them very compatible for singer-songwriters and worship leaders. A few notable guitars in this category are the Taylor Grand Auditorium, which is Taylor's most popular body shape, and uh, the early 1900s Martin Classics from the Triple O series and the Martin OM. While many artists have played a Grand Auditorium, maybe one of the most uh, famous moments for the Grand Auditorium was Eric Clapton's Unplugged concert. <laughs> Okay, so while we're talking about auditorium guitars, um, this orchestra model is uh, similar to a grand auditorium, a little bit bigger than an auditorium, has more mid-range and more volume than a concert guitar. Um, some companies don't even make the distinction between auditorium and orchestra, but since we have this beautiful Guild OM140, we figure we may as well throw it into the mix. Let's hear it. Next up, we're going to lump together two sizes, the concert and the grand concert. These guitars are a size up from the parlor guitar, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. These have a nice bright tone to them, great for finger style. The Martin 00 series were some of the most popular guitars in this category, introduced in 1877 as gut string guitars and similar to a classical guitar shape. Similar, more affordable models of these guitars were made by companies like Yamaha and Takamini. So Takaminis are pretty good, especially for guitar players just starting out. Young kids, for the kids. Takamini for the kids. Woody Guthrie famously played concert and concert grand guitars, as does John Mayer today. But probably the most famous artist to use a concert grand was Bob Dylan. His first guitar was a Martin 0017 until he traded it in 1959. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, next up, the jumbo. So while Martin is, is generally known uh, to be the innovator of acoustics, Gibson definitely owns the jumbo class of guitars. The Gibson J200 and the Super Jumbo here um, are the most popular jumbo body types. These guitars are widely used in country, uh, a little bit of rock as well, but the maple back and sides allow for a snappy tone that can cut through the mix really well. Like the Dreadnoughts before it, uh, the Jumbos are known for their larger body, increased volume, bass, top response, projection, uh, great for uh, solo instruments or for ensemble instruments. The Gibson Jumbos definitely can be pricey, uh, but numerous Japanese models were made in the 70s from companies like Morris, Ibanez, Alvarez, and Takamini. Taylor and Martin also have their jumbo models, and Guild is known for their jumbo 12 string if you're looking for that sort of thing. Next up, the parlor guitar, another one of my favorites. For a guitar to be a parlor guitar, some would say that it should be smaller than an O-size Martin concert. There's some discrepancy there though too because some Martin O-size guitars are called parlor guitars themselves. So uh, this maybe lacks an exact definition, so it's just one of those things that you can just say, that's a parlor guitar. 19th and early 20th century pre-war size one and two Martin guitars are called parlor guitars. These were made uh, popular by Jimmy Rogers. A couple modern takes on these uh, early Martin parlors are made by companies like Eastman, Blue Ridge, and Recording King, which is a really awesome one. They feel great. Um, a lot of parlors that I've played have more kind of V-shaped necks. I like writing songs on these guitars. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those guitars that puts you maybe in a place in time, which is pretty cool. I can't do that. That's I can't right. yodel like Jimmy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another take on the Parlor style is the Travel or the Miniature. These are great guitars and they have a great functionality in that they're super easy to travel with, obviously. Also for beginners or for kids, this is a great option for somebody to pick up a really well-made and good-looking and good-feeling acoustic guitar for the first time. Popularly, Martin, Johnson, and Fender all make uh, mini travel size guitars. Before we go, I would also like to mention classical guitars, nylon string guitars. Um, I have an old uh, Ariana guitar. Jose Ramirez makes great classical guitars. I think that nylon string classical guitars have an immense amount of functionality, not just for traditional uh, foot on your stool type of playing. Uh, they're great songwriting guitars and wonderful in the studio for warmer textures. Sometimes even just grabbing a nylon string guitar and playing the same shapes or the same licks you might play on a steel string will open up a whole kind of another world of imagination and tonality. 
They're really awesome and I recommend having one sitting on your couch for you ready to play when you get home. Okay, that does it for my rundown of different acoustic body shapes and sizes and the different sounds you can get from them. I hope this helped you out if you're on an acoustic guitar hunt. All these guitars and all these different brands are on reverb. You can check them out. Let us know some of your favorites in the comments and let me know if I missed something, uh, a body type that you really enjoy as well. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right with you. That's all right, mama. Just any way you do. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Flat Tops and the King of Rock and Roll.